All the slides used here belongs to their respective owner. I or the channel does not claim any rights over them. Warning, this video contains some medical images. These are for teaching purpose only. Hi everyone, I am Shahan Lai and today in this video I will talk about subacute sclerosing panencephalitis. So what is subacute sclerosing panencephalitis? This is the slide which is showing it. I will tell you but before that let me go to the another slide where I will explain the definition first. Subacute sclerosing panencephalitis, SSPE. SSPE is very very hot topic. It always comes in examination like neat PG. It is always asked, always. Every time they ask questions from this topic. So remember this, SSPE, subacute sclerosing panencephalitis. It is also known as Dawson syndrome. Dawson syndrome, okay. Dawson syndrome or Dawson disease is a kind of disease in which there is chronic progressive brain inflammation. So this is a brain inflammation, a kind of itis, a kind of inflammation in the brain that occurs chronic. It may occur with a long period of time. So it is a chronic and it is a progressive brain inflammation. Basically it is a slow infection. It is a slow infection it do not cause in a day it takes time so it is a very slow infection and how it is caused basically it is caused by a defective strain of hyper mutated measles virus so it is actually caused due to measles virus which has been hyper mutated which has been hyper mutated so hyper mutated virus hyper mutated measles virus causes sspe subacute sclerosing panencephalitis so it is a kind of subacute one and sclerosing and panencephalitis encephalitis means inflammation of the brain tissue it is a slow uh, inflammation chronic inflammation progressive disease it is known as Dawson disease Dawson disease okay always remember Dawson disease it may come as Dawson's disease the same thing so all these are question like SSP is also known as Dawson disease this is one question another question is hyper mutated measles virus who caused it it is caused by measles virus how it is caused by hyper mutation it is a rare complication of the measles virus and who are affected especially it is affected in children teens and young adults now look at this picture here i will explain measles because measles will complicate into this okay so ssp is actually a complication of measles it is because of the hyper mutation of the measles virus so what happens in measles you have high fever you can see high fever temperature is high you have runny nose this is very very important runny nose often people forget this symptom runny nose so whenever the patient comes with rash and runny nose with fever rash runny nose and fever then it is measles so runny nose is very very important and if you check the uh, rash you can find out the rash is maculopapular rash the rash is maculopapular rash erythematous rash and also the patient will show conjunctivitis the patient will show inflammation red eyes so always remember inflamed red eyes this is also another symptom we often uh, mention the coplic spots these coplic spots are found inside the mouth in the mucosa of the mouth when you check inside the mouth of the patient you can find spots these are coplic spots and it is often mentioned in measles symptoms so Coplic spots are uh, pathologically we can understand it is a uh, measles but we often forget the runny nose so always remember runny nose with fevers coplic spots in the mouth and we also forget the conjunctivitis so always remember they also have conjunctivitis inflamed red eyes inflamed red eyes so these are also symptoms along with the rash that is there and the rash first appears as 
blotchy rash always remember red blotchy rash and it starts in the face it starts in the forehead it may starts in the cheeks it may it may start in the forehead so always remember this and then this rash will be found behind the ears and after that this rash will spread to the head face and then to the trunk and extremity so the first the face region the head region will be affected behind the ears will be affected and then the rash will be uh, going to the trunk and extremity always remember it starts from the forehead let me give you a picture of the rash so that you can understand you can see the rash this is a maculopapular rash it is erythematous rash and basically this is a measles rash and this has been started in the forehead it starts with the forehead then it covers the face then it covers the head and also it can be found basically behind the ears so when the doctor is checking for measles the doctor will check behind your ears so that the rash is there then this rash will travel to the trunk and it will go move down in the extremities so in this way this uh, rash will travel in case of the measles so basically let us know about the rash first the rash comes with the temperature so the patient is also having fever temperature above 40 degree celsius the rash comes so temperature rise abruptly as the rash appears whenever the rash appears you will find the temperature is very high so rash with the temperature and the measles rash is described as generalized rash it is a generalized rash maculopapular rash erythematous rash these are the words that will be there in your question maculopapular erythematous generalized rash and the rash developed in the face it starts from the face it starts uh, uh, around the hairline and then it will go behind the ears I told you and then it will spread to the neck then to the trunk and then at last to the arms legs and feet in next 24 to 48 hours you can see the right side picture this is the picture of the coplic spots the coplic spots are very very important because so many times it is asked in the image based examination image based questions so if you uh, see this image this is coplic spot in the mucosa of the mouth when you look inside the mouth you can see these spots these are coplic spots and this actually is there along with the rash and you can understand that this is actually measles now let us come into SSPE because SSPE subacute sclerosing panencephalitis is actually a complication it is actually a rare complication and it is a slow progressive complication and it is a slow progressive neurological disorder so nerves are involved here what happens this you can see the red color uh, virus that is the measles virus that is shown and that actually turns into mutation that becomes hyper mutated and it affects the neurons it affects the brain and it causes inflammation in the brain edema in the brain swelling in the brain and it causes subacute sclerosing panencephalitis you can see the all the all the pathology pictures are shown below these are actually how the inflammation has taken place in the neurons and its surrounding in the brain tissue it, it is shown here this is the radiological image you can see in the picture where you can find out the arrow markings and all these things which are showing the itis that is inflammation in the brain swelling in the brain uh, edema in the brain and this leads to slow progressive chronic changes in the brain so you can find out in the radiology this is SSPE which is the complication of measles due to hyper mutation of the measles virus this is the pathology picture you can see here it is the picture of SSPE subacute sclerosing pan encephalitis which is also known as measles encephalitis it looks like this so sometimes it may be given in your um, examination so I am showing it you can see this is the picture of SSPE for the pathology of 
the measles encephalitis. Now let us come into SSP signs and symptoms. Basically the signs and symptoms of SSP is characterized by a history. If you take the history of the patient, the patient will tell that they already had the measles infection. So they had the measles infection followed by a asymptomatic period. So first the measles infection happened and then a asymptomatic phase happened, a period happened and it may, this may last for seven years on average or it may uh, it may be from one month to say 27 years so it can be one month to 27 years uh, asymptomatic period but it is an average that is considered as seven years so seven years is average first you have measles then you uh, it, there is a gap of seven years and then you have sspe ssp is subacute sclerosing panencephalitis i already told you so what are the signs and symptoms in ssp you will have a neurodegeneration you will have neurodegenerative disorder where your neurons will be affected and you will have different kinds of behavioral changes, intellectual disability, intellectual problems and also this will be accompanied with the seizures. Different kinds of seizures you may have, generally the myoclonic seizures, okay, your muscles, clonus seizures. So all these myoclonic seizures you can have along with you can have ataxia, gait problem, you can also have blindness and eventually this can lead to death. So it is fat also SSP is fatal also now let us learn about the progression of the disease this disease progress in stages so there are stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 and stage 4 in stage 1 you have depression you have mood swing so you have a lot of personality changes there is mood swing there is depression and this stage can last up to six months so six months you are having stage one that is you are depressed next stage is you are having jerking you are having muscle spasm you are having seizures low vision dementia so all these muscle jerking muscle spasm all these are stage two so jerking movement that is stage two stage three these jerking movements are replaced and now you don't have the jerking movement in stage 3. In stage 3, these jerking movements are replaced by twisting movement. You are having a twist. You are now having twisting movements and rigidity. Now you are very rigid and you have the twisting movements so now you are don't you you don't have the jerking movements and all these things and this stage 3 where you have rigidity and twisting movements instead of jerking movements this can lead to death so stage 3 is more complicated and the final stage is the stage 4 stage 4 is a stage in which breathing heart rate blood pressure all are affected your breathing are affected your heart rate are affected blood pressure affected and this can lead to severe consequence like coma and death now let us come to the treatment of this disease is there any treatment if the diagnosis is made during the stage 1 then only you can have some treatment like you can use isoprenosin. Isoprenosin is actually used. It is also known as inociplex. Inociplex is also known as isoprenosin. Isoprenosin is used and sometimes interferon alpha is also used. Intraventricular interferon alpha. So these are the two things we use for the treatment. Isoprenosin and interferon alpha but it may vary from patient to patient and generally supportive cares are given and if the patient is having a convulsion we can give anti-convulsions now let us come to the measles virus because so many times questions came about the measles virus also so basically you can see the right side picture is a picture of the measles virus okay it looks like this exactly this is measles virus and it is pleomorphic spherical structure okay so it it differs in morphology it has various morphology so it is known as pleomorphic structure and spherical in the shape and basically it has two capsid uh, sorry inner capsid and outer envelope inner is the capsid and the outer is the 
envelope. Envelope means the outer. Like we have the envelope where we put the letters. So envelope is the outer one and the inner is known as capsid. Now inner capsid is composed of the helix of RNA and three proteins. So the capsid has the R, uh, the inner capsid is composed of coiled helix of RNA and three proteins. The outer envelope which is the outside one, the outer envelope consists of two types of glycoprotein. You can see the right side, can we see the small structure which are there outside? These outside are actually the glycoproteins. There are two types of glycoproteins outside in the, env uh, in the envelope and inside you have the RNA, helix of RNA and proteins. For understanding with clarity, I have taken this picture. You can see this picture very clearly. You can see inside is the RNA with some proteins. There are three types of proteins which are there inside with the RNA and the which is uh, which is inside the uh, inner one that is the capsid and the outer one you have the envelope. The envelope composed of or consists of uh, two types of glycoprotein. You can see the glycoproteins. You can see it looks like a pin which is there on the outside. These are the glycoproteins. Okay. These are the glycoproteins. There are two types of glycoproteins. So this is the overall picture of the measles virus. How it looks. So this is the end of this video. If you like this video, make a thumbs up and please subscribe our channel because our channel contains many videos on medicine, on pathology. So basically you can learn a lot of disease from this uh, channel and this will surely help you in your med school whichever year you are in you may be in first year second year third year just subscribe this channel and watch all the videos in the playlist you just go to the playlist and watch the videos on medicine on pathology at least watch these two playlists then you can understand a lot of disease and if you have time watch the playlist the usmle lab there are so many disease available there and this uh, channel is very active channel where uh, i try to make videos every day but if there is, if I don't get time, I cannot make it every day, but always I make it. So you can get a lot of information from this channel. Please subscribe this channel and watch all the videos of medicine and pathology. And if you like this uh, channel, please subscribe this channel and ring the bell and write down in the comment section below if you like our videos. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Bye bye.